So how do anim curves compare to traditional keyframes and a keyframe stretcher when it comes to building your animations and adapting those animations to different clip points? Let's take a look. How's it going everybody? This is the third video in a series related to anim curves. So if you wanna catch up on any content that you might've missed, I'll have a link to the playlist here and in the video description. And in the first video in this series, I showed you a macro that I created that you can download and play with yourself. And that macro allows you to visualize how the anim curves work, see what all the different curves look like in terms of their shape, change different settings with an anim curve, and really just have sort of a playground to see how those different settings affect the way the anim curves behave. So if you'd like to get that free of charge, you can jump over to my Buy Me A Coffee page and grab that. And if you wanna throw me a coffee, you can do that as well. One of the main benefits of using anim curves is that you don't have to use any keyframes whatsoever in your project. The anim curves will also retime themselves automatically to make your clip responsive to changes in duration. A keyframe stretcher with traditional keyframes will allow you to take the middle of a composition or a clip and stretch that out and that keyframe stretcher will adapt just the middle of that clip to accommodate those differences. So how does that compare to the way anim curves handle changes in clip duration? By the way, let me stop just a second and say thanks so much for stopping to check out this video. My name is Ron Chanal and my goal here on this channel is to help you become a better video editor and motion graphics creator by providing tips, techniques, tools, and assets all related to DaVinci Resolve. So if that's the kind of content you want, please be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and enable all notifications so you'll be alerted whenever I post a new video. Let's get back to the anim curves. I have a couple of examples to look at today, so let's dive in and see if we can bring some clarity to this. So the first example is a basic lower third animation that's done using traditional keyframes. So let's take a quick look at that. You can see that we just have a few different elements that animate in and then animate out. And the second example that I have is basically the same lower third that's been converted over to use anim curves instead of traditional keyframes. Now let's go into Fusion and take a look at the differences and how these things are built. And then We'll talk about the differences and how they respond to changes in clip duration. We're going to start out with the lower third that's built using traditional keyframes. And you can see as we look at the different elements of this composition, we have keyframes spread throughout. And then of course we have a keyframe stretcher here. So let's jump back over to the timeline and see how this responds to changes in clip duration. So I'm just going to play that through real quick. We can see how that timing looks. What I'm gonna do is make a copy of this animation. I'm gonna change the opacity of the second animation so that we can see through it. I'm just gonna extend the duration. So as you can see, the timing of the beginning of the animation is identical between those two clips because they're both being played at the same time right now and there's no delay or changes in timing between those two clips. And similarly, if we were to move the original clip and match it up to the end of the new lengthened clip and play this through, you can can see that both clips end with exactly the same timing. So that is one of the nice things about a keyframe stretcher is that it maintains the exact timing down to the frame level of whatever you've created in your composition. So now let's take a look at the differences in how the anim curve based animation handles those timing changes. And here is a modified version of that lower third that's been converted over to anim curves. And one of the things I've done here is I've moved all the different animations to transform nodes rather than merge nodes. But if we take a look at this and we go to the modifiers tab, we can see that we have an anim curve on this transform and then we have an anim curve on this transform and we have anim curves on the other transforms as well. This composition has no keyframes whatsoever. All of the animation is handled exclusively using anim curves with no keyframe stretcher. Let's jump back over to the timeline and take a look at how this one behaves with changes in timing. I'm going to make a copy of this clip and then I'm going to drop the opacity down a good ways. And then I'm just gonna extend the duration of this one out a bit. So let's take a look and see how that plays out. So here goes the first one, and then there's the second one that follows it shortly thereafter. So you can see it has just stretched everything out. And similarly, if I drag the original clip over to match the end of the first clip, we'll see the first one start, and then the second one will start. And then again, if we go back and look at the original animation that's built on keyframes using a keyframe stretcher, we'll see that those outro animations are still perfectly in sync, even though the duration of the second composition has been extended significantly over the first one. 
So everything still remains timed exactly the same. If you have exact timing that you need to preserve in your composition, you probably want to look at using traditional keyframes and a keyframe stretcher because it will maintain that exact timing down to the frame level, whereas the anim curves are gonna stretch everything or compress everything based on changes to that clip duration. It really depends on your use case and what you would find most beneficial for your project, but it's really important to understand those differences and know what to expect when you make these changes. So if you have a small change, reducing the duration of a clip by 10 or 15 frames or five frames, you may not even notice that difference in timing. But if you're taking a clip or a composition and you're extending it by twice or three times the length, you will definitely notice changes in timing in those cases and it will probably be drastic enough to where it's going to affect your animation and may not be what you're looking for. Let me point out one other important difference in how a composition that uses anim curves behaves compared to a composition that uses traditional keyframes and a keyframe stretcher. If you make a cut in a clip that's built using traditional keyframes and a keyframe stretcher, it loses track of where those keyframes are and you will lose either the beginning of your animation or the end of your animation depending on where you make that cut. If you were to make a cut in an animation or a composition that's built using anim curves, it will retain beginning and ending animations wherever you make a cut. So if you make a cut in the middle, you're gonna have a beginning and ending animation on the first portion and on the second portion. So let's take a look at a couple examples of how that actually plays out. So if we go back to the clips we've already looked at, I'm going to first disable our short versions of the clip. And again, just to look at how these compositions are currently working, if we just play through the first one that uses traditional keyframes, you can see that we animate in and then the clip plays and then we animate out. So if I go to the middle of this clip and make a cut, if we go to the beginning of the first clip, we can play it through and we can see that we still have our intro animation and we still have our outro animation. And that's because it does have a keyframe stretcher. So when we made that cut, it adapted itself to the length of the new clip. So again, if I play that through, the intro animation happens and the outro animation happens. If we go to the new clip that was created based on the cut that we just made, we'll see that we get no animation whatsoever. And that's because the second clip no longer has a reference to the keyframes that were being referenced by the keyframe stretcher. It doesn't know what to do. So we basically end up with a blank clip at that point. Now let's take a look at what happens on the clip that was created using anim curves. I'm going to make those cuts and give us a little bit more room to work with. So when we play this through, what we can expect to see is intro and outro animations on all three of the clips that we've created by making those cuts. And the other thing we can expect to see is that those animations will execute a bit faster than the original animations, because just as the anim curve based animations are stretched out if the composition is lengthened, those same animations are compressed if that clip is shortened or the composition is shortened or you make cuts into your existing composition creating smaller clips as we've done here. So let's take a look at that. We'll play through the first one. We see our intro animation and outro animation and our second one intro and outro and then our third one, we also get the intro and the outro animation. So the benefit is it retains all of your animation work across whatever clips you create by making those cuts. But the trade off is it does adjust the timing of those animations based on the length of that clip compared to the original composition. So have you used anim curves or a keyframe stretcher in any of your projects? And how did that go for you? Drop in a comment and let me know. I'd love to hear from you and get your input on your experiences and anything you've learned along the way. And if you have any suggestions or recommendations for future content related to anim curves or keyframe stretchers or fusion or davinci resolve in general drop those in the comments as well i'd love to hear from you and get your input on that content and if you found this video informational or useful please do hit that thumbs up button and share it with your friends that means a lot to me and it helps the channel out as well and it shows youtube that you appreciate the content and if you're new here please do consider subscribing hitting that notification bell and enabling all notifications so you'll be alerted whenever i post a new video thanks so much for watching have fun creating and editing. I'll see you next time.